Episode 3 Agility combined with sporty dynamism and outstanding comfort on long distances. That was the primary goal we set ourselves. Added to this, of course, was what we discussed a minute ago with respect to telematics, namely a clear layout and convenient operation of the entire car. It's this combination, rather than a specific criterion, that has to be observed. It's the sum total of all the features of a car which has to appeal to the customer. When we have achieved this, we can be sure of having developed a good car. Nehmen Sie die rechte Taste daneben. Dort können Sie das Display letztendlich schließen. Das Gerät bleibt in voller Funktion und das Display klappt weg und Sie werden davon nicht mehr abgelenkt. When I fold away the display, command remains engaged and yet I have an uncluttered dashboard with a sporty design. And I can still have the functions of command displayed to me in the instrument cluster. I am very satisfied with the system we have developed here. I believe that we have created a benchmark in Europe where telematic navigation systems are concerned. We have incorporated a large number of functions, including new functions functions, which can easily be operated in a specific Mercedes style. We have also dispensed with unnecessary detail features. We have now been developing the telematic system for well over three years, with quite a large team. We are all highly committed, and we have come up with a really good product. The value of a system reveals itself only when it works with 100% reliability under all conditions, in all weathers, in snow, ice and in the dust of the desert. That was the primary focus of our project, given the fact that we not only received positive press reviews on the subject of quality in the past, that was the major challenge of our team, to link up and control all the development activities, and to pursue this quality approach throughout the process, from the first drafts through to the finished car. The issue of verification of the electrical and the electronic components plays a highly important role in this respect. Das ist wie beim 2.3, den haben wir schon drin beim 2.3 in Serie, beim Diesel, 100 Prozent. Ja, der ist doch aber auch nicht schlechter. Wie ja. gesagt, das ist Heul, aber sonst ist der, der in der E-Speise. In this context, the experts repeatedly refer to HIL, which stands for Hardware in the Loop, and means that all these components can be installed in a lab, in a car on the table, so to speak, long before the car itself is produced. On this model you can switch the lights on, activate the windshield wipers, and operate the windshield washer nozzles. All these functions can be tested and developed in this laboratory setup. And the software can be optimized. It's a major success factor if you can install components in the car which were tested at a very early stage and have reached a very high quality level. This is then followed by trial driving sessions in Namibia, Sweden, Laredo and many other places where tests under extremely difficult climatic conditions can be carried out. I'm heading the chassis and acoustics tuning team, and at the same time I'm responsible for the verification of the complete car, the new C-Class, within the project. In our team, I am working together with several engineers in tuning the chassis, steering, and acoustic behavior of the car to achieve what the customer will ultimately perceive, namely the agility and ride comfort of the car. Oh, hier sieht so aus, wie wenn die Straße wieder komplett wegschwemmt ist. Jetzt fahren wir mal langsam davor. 
Testing here in Namibia forms part of our endurance testing program throughout the world. We come to Namibia because of the large number of rough roads here. We perform up to 99% of our tests on very dusty gravel tracks on which the bodywork and the chassis are subjected to extreme vibrations. On these sharp stones, it can be one way or another. It just depends. With a bit of luck, everything will be okay. You don't even see the stones when they are as sharp as these. If you're unlucky, the stone cuts through the tire wall, and then the tire looks like this. 